Hey, how's it going, YouTube? My name is Mike Flores, and I'm a tattoo artist based out of New Braunfels, Texas. Lately, I've been trying to put more energy into YouTube, and I've been going live a lot more with most of my appointments. And I'll put a video link up here to my latest live if you want to check that out. While I'm live, I usually have the sound turned off, mostly because YouTube will flag anything that is copyrighted in the background, like music, or if I have a movie or show playing for my client. So I get a lot of questions that I can't really answer because the sound's off. So I thought I'd make a video about it. So I can go into more detail explaining my drop system and how I change it from person to person depending on the client's skin tone. Hopefully if this video gets a lot of love, I can continue to make more videos like this about other questions and topics y'all have about tattooing. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave them down below in the comments. The most popular question by far is what ink do I use and how I set up my drop system. So the brand of ink I like to use is Dynamic. For the really dark parts of the tattoo, I use Dynamic Triple Black, and then I use a regular Dynamic Black broken down with distilled water as my drop system. I have tried a bunch of other inks throughout the years, and Dynamic for me is just the most reliable and darkest but also not very thick so it flows well and doesn't clog up the needle as bad as the other inks that I've tried in the past. And for being a thinner ink, it doesn't blow out as easy as a lot of other inks that I've tried. I also really like the white ink from Dynamic. It seems to work well for me. I usually always have like two or three bottles on standby, mostly because 98% of what I'm doing most of the time is black and gray realism. I'm not sponsored in any way from Dynamic or any of the other needles or machines that I'm using for tattooing. I use them only because it's what I found that works best. I was sponsored from a tattoo supply company a while back and they would send me needles and other supplies and I actually still use them because I really do like a few of the needles from that company but I felt like the supplies sent was not worth the hassle for them always telling me to post for them and like tag them and stuff like that. I mean I, I think I was getting like $60 of needles it really wasn't worth it and they kept pestering me. I actually feel like the sponsorships in the tattoo community take advantage of a lot of tattooers, but that's a whole video in itself. <laughs> Moving on. The mixing medium I use is distilled water. I've basically been using it since I started tattooing and haven't really found a need to use anything else. I feel like that works great and it's not something that needs to be overthought. I have tried other mediums like using Witch Hazel or some name brand mixing medium, but I don't really feel like it changed anything. I do though really like the squeeze bottle that I use. It's got a small hole that you can cut to have the opening as big as you want. So whenever I'm squeezing the bottle, I can make it come out with the stream and the amount of pressure that comes out of the tip. So when I'm diluting the ink at the same time, it's getting mixed up really well and, it, and I know it's going to be really nice and mixed up when I start tattooing. When I'm placing the ink caps on, I usually just scrape a little of whatever tattoo ointment I'm using at the time to hold down the cap to the tray. I have been using Vitalitry for a while now. I really like the consistency of it and I haven't had any reactions on any of my clients since I started using it. I also like it because it happens to have a nice smell that like isn't overwhelming or anything. It's, it's not greasy, it's nice. When I place the ink caps, I usually have the black sticking out a little further than the rest. I'll put two of the large ink caps down and then put two more a little bit higher than the rest. And then the next two I'll put them back in line and then I'll have one off to the side with just distilled water. This just helps me so whenever I'm looking at my tray I don't have to keep counting or whatever ink cap I'm going to dip into. I can just look at whichever corner I need. If I don't stagger them they all look the same and it's hard to figure out which is the one that I need rather than having to figure out which cap has the right amount of ink that I need. I use the 20 millimeter by 17 millimeter ink caps. They are really large and hold a good amount of ink, usually enough to get me through the full day session. It doesn't really waste a lot of ink either because it's mostly distilled water except for the three quarter cap of black. And the size of the cap is important because of the ratio of ink to distilled water will change depending on the size of ink caps. So for example, if my ink caps were half the size and I put 10 drops, it's going to be equivalent to a 20 drop. So I try to keep that pretty consistent, but as long as they are 20 millimeter by 17 millimeter, the brand doesn't matter. If I know I'm gonna use more of a certain shade, then I'll just put an extra ink cap with whatever ink I need. And because it's staggered the way it is, 
no matter what, they're gonna be out of line, so I would always be able to find my place. So my drop system changes depending on the client's skin tone. So I will change the percentage of ink to each cap or even take away ink caps entirely, depending where my client's skin tone falls on the Fitzpatrick scale. This is the Fitzpatrick scale. So for a one, two, and three skin type, I will usually use my base drop system. For those skin types, I have more room to fit in more gray values than a skin type four or five. And every time we move up on the Fitzpatrick scale, we have less room to fit in more gray value because the value scale is shrinking. And working in skin is already limiting the amount of value we have because black will never stay truly black no matter what you do. And you can never go lighter than your client's skin tone, which limits the amount of caps you should use per skin tone. Even if you were to pack in a bunch of white ink, the ink sits under the colored layer of skin. So it will grow back after healing and dull that white out and push it away from the white side of the value scale back to whatever the client's skin tone is. This gets a lot more complicated, but for the most part, this is why I try to stay away from using a lot of white ink. And you'll see that in most of my pieces. I'm really just trying to get the contrast from the person's skin tone and black. The only difference is for the skin type one and two, I would be more open to using white ink and for skin type three, I tend to try to only put it in shiny or wet parts of the tattoo, like a gem or light bouncing off the eyes or a glare. Like I said, white tends to yellow over time and I'm already not a big fan of white ink and I try not to use it if I don't have to. My goal is to have the tattoo look good without the use of any white ink and I try to use the skin as the lightest part of the tattoo. Then come in with the white ink as kind of like a cherry on top. I find that the tattoo lasts a lot longer through the years because there isn't a lot of white ink to yellow if your client likes the sun. And if they tan and their skin returns back to normal, it's not going to be yellow. It's just going to go back to their natural skin tone. All right, so now that I've explained a little on how I can change depending on skin type, for skin type one, two, and three, I line up my caps, putting the darkest on the left and the lightest on the right, starting with one full cap of triple black. To the right of that, I will do a three quarter cap of regular dynamic black, then a half cap, an 18 drop, a nine drop, a four drop, and a two drop. Then I'll have a clean cap of distilled water at the very right. Even though I don't really use it very often, it's nice to have it just in case I need it. For skin type four, I still do a full triple black and a three quarter cap and also a half cap, but I will make the 18 drop a 20 drop, the nine drop into a 10 drop, and the four into a five along with one cap of distilled water. For skin type five, I would keep it the same from what I was using as skin type four, but I will not put out a two drop cap and make the five drop my lightest tone. Instead of my five and 10 drop being my mid tones, I would use the 10 and 20 drop that I would mix between to get my lighter mid tones. And for something really light, I can tap into the distilled water cap. And if I needed darker mid tones, I would just use the half and three quarter cap and change my hand speed. So for skin type six, I would use a cap with triple black for my darkest areas, a three quarter cap for the dark to mid tones, and a half cap for my light tones. For this skin type, I'm heavily relying on the contrast from black to skin tone to make certain shades and using pressure and hand speed to get the tones to get them what I need to be. I also think it's really important to let the skin breathe and not put in a lot of mid tones everywhere. This makes for a lot more readable tattoo. Remember, you can't make the skin any lighter than it already is, so you have to move that white point to whatever your skin tone is. So you have to move the value scale to fit inside whatever their skin tone is and black. Depending on the tattoo and how much pure black I'll be using, I sometimes use a smaller ink cap for my triple black just to save on wasting ink. I tend to do this a lot because I treat my three quarter cap as my darkest tone. And at the end of the tattoo, I'll get my triple black and really push the darks so I know that those areas are the darkest parts of the tattoo. But if you know you're gonna be using a lot of black, just put a big ink cap. So that's pretty much it for my ink setup. This is what I've been using now for probably the last four or five years. And I really enjoy it. I really like the way it heals. The grays are nice and soft. The black is really dark. So if you try it out and you post up your tattoo on Instagram, tag me in it, I would, I would like to see it. 
I also get a lot of questions about my stand. I custom made this a while back for traveling using a mic stand and an iPad mount. It's actually pretty awesome and it breaks down really small. It doesn't take too much room when traveling and it fits on a carry-on suitcase. If you would like me to show you how I made this, let me know in the comments below. I do have a plan to make a video about critiquing my own work, so make sure to subscribe if you want to check that out. I'm planning on being pretty harsh to myself and show what I would do differently and why. Hopefully this will lead into doing a series critiquing some work sent in by y'all. I think it would be really fun. If you're interested in that, be sure to send them to MikeFloridasCritiques at gmail.com with the Instagram handle and how long you've been tattooing along with any information you'd like to add. I think that's it for today's video. I'll have an Amazon link to everything I mentioned down below if you want to try it out for yourself. Do me a favor and like or dislike the video to show YouTube that you're here watching it. This is my first official video and I can't really figure out how to end it, so...